Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, uh, January 26th uh, special board meeting. Uh, tonight's board meeting is going to be the uh, town manager's proposed budget. It'll pretty much be uh, 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 Bill's uh, show along with our finance director, George, and our um, uh, head accountant, uh, Maria. Uh, as part of the open meeting law, since we're all going Zoom, um, I have to introduce everybody uh, on the board. Um, myself, Chair Mark Elfman. Uh, Vice Chair is uh, Ed O'Leary, our clerk, Steph McGowan, uh, Leah Gibson, and um, who am I missing? Oh, <laughs> Chris Mitchell. So there's the uh, five members of the board. Um, and uh, this still being a, um, uh, a meeting, uh, is there anything, uh, Christina, on uh, citizens input? No, we didn't have it on the, the agenda, so that's okay. okay. So nothing from citizens input. So I'm gonna uh, give it to uh, Bill. Okay, hey, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us on a special meeting. I uh, appreciate the fact that we did this because it, it, we were a little bit behind in the schedule. I just want to get us back up on schedule. And um, so everybody received the books. Uh, the advisory committee is still uh, picking up their books. Uh, there's just a few left that need to be picked up, but Generally speaking, everybody has the, the documents. And and uh, first of all, I want to say out of the, uh, the, the beginning that I want to thank uh, Marie Almodova for really pulling together the Yeoman's work of pulling this together and doing a lot of the detail and, and working with all of us. Um, I'm sure we worked with all the department heads and, and everybody to pull this budget together, but Marie did all the, the really difficult work of pulling all the information together for us. So I'm really grateful for her efforts mm -hmm. in that. So thank you, Marie. Yeah, I need to I need to second that. I mean, this is um, a thorough understanding of the budget. It is so much better presented this way than in years past. This is, you know, every time I had a question, I just read further on and my question was answered pretty much with the, the details. So Marie, great job um, to you and your team. And thank you. Thank you. You know, just Doc, if you don't mind, just to second that, I know, Marie, I already sent you an email. Um, but just fabulous job with the visual presentation, the detail, even every question I've reached out to you with, I think you got back to me within like an, maybe an hour and a half tops with the full detail, exactly what we were looking for. So just, I think we're really lucky um, to have you and George. Um, so I know it's, it's always tough to get acclimated in a new job in the middle of a budget year, but, but really great job. You know, so, so think about how far, go ahead, George, uh, Mark, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I just wanted to jump on board too, uh, since we're all praising um, uh, that department. You know, uh, those of us that remembered Randy Scollins' um, presentations on the budget, I was always very impressed with uh, uh, the whole process. And, and, and this trumps that. Uh, it, it is an outstanding job and uh, uh, easy read, uh, as difficult as it is with all the numbers. Uh, user friendly, I guess, is the word uh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of. Uh, so I, I wanted to jump on to. Uh, go ahead, Bill. So, so thank you. I, I just, I, it really is a is a great document, and 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 the goal is that um, when we first uh, hired Marie and George, and we, the goal was to try and get to the point where we could win the, or at least compete for the for the national award for for budget presentation, and and you what you see tonight is actually very uh, very much in line with the with the presentation that that Marie actually was used to because she had that in Concord where she came from and uh, so you know if you can't beat them join them right so this is a classic example of, 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 of taking from the best and 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 sort of incorporating it into our organization so so really this is a it's a great step forward and last year I know Marie wanted to try and do more with the budget last year but it was sort of like a halfway through the year before she got here. So it was difficult to piece everything together, but this is sort of like the uh, the culmination of that work uh, coming to where we are right now, but it was still not done. And, you know, there's still things we still want to do and uh, we're going to take, we're going to follow Marie's lead on that. So, so thank you. So why don't we, without further ado, why don't we get started on the budget process? It's the budget itself. Um, the good news is that we are balanced at this point. Um, we have a, uh, we, we sought your direction uh, several weeks ago about where we wanted to go. Uh, we didn't quite get there, but we but we but we got there to a point where we could balance things. And uh, I do think that um, all in all, people did a really good job. There's a lot of budgets that actually came in under guidance this year, um, and some that 
uh, were over because not through any fault of their own, but because um, I, I think one that comes to mind the most is the fire department where they they had uh, three firefighters that, that just uh, were a part of a grant and the grant was the, the last year, the grant was this past year. So obviously it, 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 it boosted that budget, um, you know, for this year, but it obviously won't be the problem going forward from here. Now that we built into the budget. So, uh, but, but clearly, uh, you know, everybody was really good about trying to meet the guideline and the deadline and deadlines and guidelines uh, as best we could. So, so what we're going to do now is is uh, go through the budget presentation. It's a PowerPoint presentation. It's about ten slides or so, and we'll and then we'll then we'll open up for discussion. But just bear in mind, I think this is really this the very beginning of the process. Um, there's still some numbers that we don't even know yet. We're we're taking educated guesses at them. Um, the one that comes to mind that, that you'll see is is the uh, is the regional school district that we that it's a 7.5 percent increase because we're only based that based on last year's increase um but we don't know if that number is going to come in that high so we don't know that we're hoping it doesn't come any higher than that but certainly we're hoping it doesn't come in that high the pension number we got not unofficially but it but it looks pretty good um it's a better number than i've seen in the past uh the number usually comes around eight to ten percent each year this year it came in around 5.5 so that was a good indication of uh, that. Would, I think that's based upon the return and investment that everybody saw during the past year. It was a good year for that. Um, the other thing too is that we did uh, just most recently get our health insurance indication that overall health insurance will be going up, going up around 3% this year. I do think that number might come in lower ultimately for us. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I'm not betting on it at this point. So I'm, I'm carrying a 3% number in that. It's actually 2.9, but we carried it at three. I do think the number will come in even lower than that. So, um, and then on the general insurance number, we don't have that number yet. We're anticipating a two and a half percent increase, but it could be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, depending upon where the number comes in. But either way, we, we think we're going to be balanced. In fact, actually we have about a 30, Nine thousand for about a forty thousand uh, dollar to the good number in terms of budgeting balance, budget balance at this point in time. So, so Maria, if you would just share your screen at this point with everybody, we can get get full go forward with the uh, presentation itself. Okay, so um, the first slide, if you'll, if we'll just go to slide number two. Um, if you would. Uh, the first slide is just a, a pie shape uh, document showing you know, the revenues and the expenses. You know, clearly 70% of the of the amount of money that comes into the budget is from the from the re, is from the. No, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but Marie, can you just make it so it's just the one slide? I'm just I can't really see. I don't know if others yeah. are having trouble with the size. There we go. There Is that we better? Go. Perfect. There yes. we go. Okay, great. So, um, so seventy percent of it is is the tax levy, uh, and that's gone up by two and a half percent this year. Uh, we we do anticipate uh, new growth somewhere around five fifty, which is again a very very low estimate. Um, I think we'll actually come in better than that. I'm a little nervous about where the number is this year, but I but I do anticipate the number that that's going to come in for next year will be better because I think we're going to start start seeing some growth take off after July one of this year. This is coming fiscal year. Um, sewer indirect costs uh, and water indirect costs make up a, a portion of the budget as well. The ambulance fund is about about two percent. Uh, local receipts makes up twelve percent. Net state aid is about eleven percent. So those are the uh, those are really the com major components. We have a free cash a component of about two percent this year, and, and and that's higher than we want to be normally. But given the circumstances in the year that we've had and and where we are. That's why we build up our reserves and why we have them is is for these kind of situations and you know I'm seeing some of my 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 uh, comrades in other towns in a much worse position right now uh, where they're not balanced uh, not even close to being balanced and, and they have no reserves so um, just to be clear about this for anybody who's listening tonight the reserves that we're using are strictly free cash and overlay surplus they are not we are not touching our stabilization fund uh, we have not touched that we have not even thought about touching it. We uh, do not see the need to touch it. So anybody who's uh, listening, we want to be 100% clear about that. We are not touching any of our stabilization accounts to balance this budget. So what makes up the budget? Uh, obviously, the biggest component is education. That's no surprise. It's been that way for since the beginning of time. 51% uh, 
and then uh, public works makes up about 3%, human services about one, culture and recreation 2%, debt services at five. That number actually came down this year, which is quite extraordinary when you think about the fact that we actually have the new borough school in there um, and, and the town hall and the, and the debt service number came down this year. So that's a good sign. Um, insurance and others uh, is a two point is twenty one percent. The biggest number of that is the pension number, of course, and, and I think in some of the other numbers, the, you know, general insurance and health and, light and, and health insurance, those numbers combined make up a pretty big component of the budget. General government, believe it or not, only makes up four percent of the overall budget cost. So, so they, those are relatively small numbers in the scheme of things. Public safety is is another big number at thirteen percent. Uh, and that's the second largest uh, budget component other than you know, insurance and other. All right, next slide, please. So this is just a breakdown of, of where the, the percentages is of the budget, how, how these numbers went down, went up this year. I'll make up of the components of the budget is 2.47%. Is the, these are the amount, amount of money that went up this year. Um, 18.76 was GIS and IT. It's a small number, but it still went up um, because we added uh, Rainbow this year into that cost. And also, uh, we, we, uh, we also uh, transferred the cost of, of, IT, of all of our IT functions for the most part into that account so we, so we can manage that, that cost a little bit better. Um, this was, that was sort of more or less a, a function of, of the reality that we're going to be doing more things remotely. So we had to invest a little bit into that, into the rainbow system, which actually has worked very well for, for us to do many of our uh, meetings and external meetings as well. Uh, town clerk's up 3.6, 3.06%, elections registration 2.4, and, and so on and so forth. It's pretty clear as to where the numbers are. Fire was the big number, of course, at 6.64%, but that was the, again, the three firefighters. If you take away those positions, it's down, it's only up about one, one, two percent at the most. Um, the education component, while it's up 3.08% overall, this, the, the Foxborough school system is only up 2.98%. So they were just under, just over the the, uh, the, the two and a half uh, number that we were looking for. And, so, and Southeastern Regional makes up to seven and a half percent. Uh, a component of that number as well. Public works committed two and a half percent. Snow and ice, no increase. Street lighting, no increase. Solid waste disposal went down by eight percent. Um, the no next group of numbers is human services. You can see that those numbers are really relatively flat. Uh, no real, real surprises any of those numbers there. Culture and recreation dropped uh, probably one of the biggest ways. Um, recreation didn't go up at all. Historical commission didn't go up at all. Library. Library's down, but the reason why library is down is because they had several people retire last year and the people who replaced them were came in at lower salary. So it wasn't like we were able to trim any of their operations or their people at all. We kept it the same level, but they, it was a cheaper cost to the organization because of uh, where those salaries came in. Same thing um, in looking at in some of the other lower numbers, you'll see that there, that really is a, is a big consideration. So um, I, I know that that issue came up one year, you know, we, we hire people at higher numbers. We don't actually, we, the reality is that we, we hire people at a, at a lower number more often than not to try and uh, fill these positions. However, they have been very, very rare situations where we've had to hire people at the same level that where the person left because the, 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 the market was so tight to get positions filled. Um, Health services, you can see the Board of Health is only up 0.86%, and that's primarily because we're able to hire the new director at a lower number than the former director, um, who is he, here, by the way. He actually started this week, so it's great. you'll get a chance to meet him next week. He's a, he's a terrific young man. He'll be he's going to do a great job for us. So um, debt service is down 2.06%, which is great news. Uh, pensions, as I indicated earlier, is 5.55%, and unemployment is at 2.5% growth. Um, we're, we're holding firm with that number at this point. We did have, um, and one of the questions that came from one of the board members was, you know, did we have any problems with, with some of the claims? The answer is yes, we did. Uh, but we've been tracking those claims very closely. We, have, we actually use a third party to help manage those with the school department. And uh, we've been keeping on staying on top of the ones that where people file fraudulent claims against us. So we're, we're tracking that very closely. Talked about health group and health life insurance uh, earlier at three percent, and risk management is at two and a half percent, and we're going to have to wait and see. The reserve funds uh, in no uh, no increase, and the salary reserve um, in the 
is a new account, so there is no percentage increase over last. And we'll talk about that later on in the presentation tonight about that, how we're dealing with that. That's actually just a better way of budgeting. Um, and that's in response to several comments that have been made over the years. I know Stephanie probably remembers this serving on the advisory committee that that question came up every year when we started looking at salary numbers as to how we do that. And we couldn't, we, we finally sat down and figured it out that this was a better way to do this so that we didn't um, over, over inflate numbers and budgets. And then at the same then and then next year they, they would drop precipitously uh, without any really good explanation for it. So this was a better way to do this. And, and Marie's used this in, in, in Concord in, in, uh, in her experience and it's worked out really well. I do like the approach, with, but we'll talk about it a little bit later on and maybe let the, her explain it a little bit better for you. Um, the unappropriate accounts, uh, uh, state and county assessments overlay snow and ice. There's no, no increase in any of those numbers. So those numbers are flat. The water enterprise funds and sewer are gonna be treated separately as a budget item because that's the way they should be because there's no tax dollars going into those. The reason why water is so high is because that's a debt service issue. Um, we, we borrowed uh, quite a bit of money against that. So that, that's the reason why that number is up so high. But again, that's, that's rate related and it hasn't really gonna affect the rates that's already been uh, scheduled for the next several years. Um, let's go next one. So the, the tax levy is up 3.29%, and that includes new growth and the uh, the amount that goes up every year in the budget. State aid's a flat number. We're not looking to, to raise that. The good news is that we're not looking to decrease it either. Um, I saw I had a preliminary indication from the from the governor and lieutenant governor just last week that they're going to try at least maintain a flat number for that and maybe even go up a little bit. So if we pick up any money there, that's going to go against the reducing our use of free cash in, in, in other areas. So uh, that's, that could be good news for us. Local receipts um, is up 4.35%, but we'll show you a, a really interesting document later on that sort of explains why we think we can go up that way. And not only that, but we're still way below the, the, uh, the three-year average that we've been using for collecting in that. And we're still about almost $2 million below that, that average in terms of collection. So I th we do think fiscal, fiscal 20, um, 2021, 22 rather, will in fact be a better year because don't forget that starts July 1 and we're going to start seeing things start to reopen. So once you start seeing the reopen economy, you're going to see numbers come and start popping up a little bit, especially in the restaurants and hotel numbers. Um, so we think we're going to be okay with that indication there. Available in others uh, is, is some of the reserve numbers that we're using against the budget to try and balance things. Um, higher than we normally like to be, but that's, again, that's why um, I, I know if some of you were here when Randy was the, was the director of finance and he used to use that. That's the toggle that we used to try and balance things. When things are, are good, we, uh, we use less free cash. When things are, are bad, we use more free cash, but it keeps us charge it later on when we have uh, the good years to, to, to put more money into that account. Um, town government is, is up 2.79% overall. Um, you can see that uh, we, we did a pretty good job of keeping those numbers relatively felt flat. Um, and uh, education is up 3.06, but that includes the, the number from the regional school. So that, again, as I indicated earlier, the, uh, the, the Foxborough school system is up 2.98%. The shared expenses are up 3.68%, which believe it or not is actually one of the lower years that I've seen in that number. So um, so that's key. That's the reason why the number was able to come in at the number that it did at 3.23. So I, that's actually good news in that respect. Um, so we, we're we, overall the budget's in at 3.23%. Um, most of the impact is, is coming from, from some of the, in the fixed cost areas. It's not from the operation side, which is good. Uh, and, and something consistent with what we talked about during the uh, during, during the pre pre budget discussions. Um, the um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So this is just another way of looking at the budget. So um, you can see that we're going to go up three point one five percent. That's the actual number that we'll ask from town meeting for an increase of three point one five percent. Because some of the, that does include the, the state assessments and state numbers that we that we plug in to balance everything at the end. So we are looking. Federal government's up two point four eight percent. Education up three point oh six. Public works one point nine five. Um, human services one point seven. 
1.17. Uh, calls to recreation are actually down, <laughs> along with debt service and uh, insurance and other, which is up around 5%. Um, the, the overall total for the enterprise funds is 8.55%. 8 Obviously, the, the yeoman amount of money is, is coming from the water fund, uh, whereas the sewer fund is, is actually uh, almost is less than 1%. All right. So in summary uh, on the budget, and then we'll, we'll talk about a few of the charts later on. Uh, the general government has no major increases. The expenses for rainbow teleconferencing and HR onboarding software, which, by the way, we are using in this fiscal year. But we're actually going to bud we're going to use the budget money. We're going to we're going to budget the money into this account so we can manage the, all of our IT expenses a little bit better from having it in one account and so distribute it all over the place. Um, GI, the overall budget increases is aligned with guidance. Public safety increases attributable to the salaries of the three firefighters, paramedics, are, are probably about $204,000. The, uh, and because that's really the end of the SAFER grant, which was in January of this, uh, actually this month. Uh, the salaries will be paid for with ambulance receipts. We're going to do that for this year. We think we're going to be able to move more of the money from the bu actual budget to pay for that for next year. So I think we're going to be okay with that. That, month, that number continues to be uh, doing very well, the, the ambulance receipts number. So we're, we're not concerned with the growth in, in the amount of money that we're using there. So we're still well there. Um, the education number is 2.98, as I talked about, 7.5 for the South Reeds Regional. Public Works, no major increases. Uh, human Services, no major increases. Cost Recreation, no major increases. And debt Service, no major increases. Um, Insurance and other pension assessment is increasing at 5.5. Insurance assessment, the health insurance is, is at 5, 3%. And the, the establishment of the salary reserve budget line is to fund collective bargaining costs, retirement payouts, and unanticipated mm -hmm. salary adjustments throughout the course of the year. Now, we had we didn't have a, a fall time meeting this year. So, therefore, um, some of these things would have been reserve, uh, uh, resolved at that special town meeting. So you, you know, even though you saw some lines that were up a little bit higher than normal, we could have fixed those at the special. But by, by establishing the salary reserve budget line, this is a better way for us to take care of those situations without artificially adjusting those numbers from year to year. So last year, for instance, in the library, had a $30,000 line item for, for a payout of some people who were retiring. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't put that number in their budget this year. We'd put it into this number and have that money set there so that sit there. So, so at the end, you don't necessarily have to use all that money because if you end up hiring a person at a lower number or you had to wait for a while to not have to fund that budget for a while, you would be in a position where you wouldn't have to fund the full $30,000 anyways. So this is a better way to actually allocate those funds and, and to use it. And, and in the end, it still gets approved by the ADCOM uh, the, the board will see this in terms of transfers at the end of the year that we're gonna I'm gonna make as the town manager transfer, and uh, you'll see. So it's it's all it's all very um, um, it's 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 as clear as it can be in terms of um, you know what we're doing what we're trying to do here. It's just a better way of budgeting. And then the water on the increases attributed to the estimated debt service payment for 9.4 million dollars in bond issuance, bond is fully funded through water receipts and retained earnings. Right. So th here's a, just another way of looking at the budget. You can see that over the years, um, really, the, 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 the large numbers have been had education. Obviously, the next is debt service, insurance and other. Uh, actually, insurance and other is really the other big, big, big number. Uh, you know, uh, public safety is the next number in line and everything falls in underneath that. So um, so even, you know, um, so, you know, some of the lowest costs are, are cost numbers are are those that where you know the day-to-day -day administration of the government is is actually very low in comparison to some of these other operations. All right, next slide. So you can see, excuse me, the tax levy is at fifty-one thousand seven sixty-one. The prop two and a half that's is is added to that, which is one million two ninety-four. So about one point three million dollars in in prop two and a half growth. Uh, the new growth number is five fifty, which you can see is the lowest number I've used in many, many years. I do think that number is actually gonna do better. So we've got a little bit of room on that number, but again, if we come in higher and lower and the number comes in higher, that money all flows into free cash anyways. So the subtotal is 53,605,278. The excluded debt number is, which by the way, is made up of the uh, the high school, the, the, the public safety building, the school, the library, 
in the middle school what are the four primary uses of those exclu that excluded debt. You recall that the town hall and, and, the, uh, and, the, and the borough school are all included debt. In, so they're actually in the budget already. So uh, those on add-ons, those are actually in that 53605 number in terms of uh, in terms of the levy number. Um, so the total uh, of the of the uh, available revenues is 55,717059. That's the amount of money we'll have available for the budget for fiscal 22. Next slide, Marie. Okay. State aid history. So this is where we. This is what we're anticipating for next fiscal year. We do anticipate unrestricted local aid to go up a little bit, but we're not going to count those chickens until they're hatched. Uh, we we see the government. The governor came out with his budget with a little bit higher number than that, but uh, we still have to wait for the Senate and the House to come in with their numbers. But um, but that's a long that's a long process. So we we it, it goes from the governor's budget to the House Ways and Means to the House voting on in their number. Then it goes to the Senate Ways and Means, Senate Senate's full vote, and then you have a conference committee that tries to figure out the difference between the two. And then ultimately, that's the number that goes back to the governor. The governor could then veto certain things, and that number could actually change again. So it, we won't see that number, that true number. This year, we didn't see the true number till uh, November, I think it was, the, was when we saw the state aid number come in. This year, we hope to see the number in June. Um, it's still, jury's still out on whether or not we'll see any federal aid this year, uh, which could actually offset some of the money. In, but I do think it's, if we do see federal aid, it might be as an offset against this fiscal year. Uh, but though I did see the National League of Cities is looking to try and do something where a two year proposal where there will be money for this year as well as next year. So still, jury's still out on that. We'll have to wait and see where the, where the final number comes in. So the subtotal uh, of, of um, State aid is 8,608,290. That's the number that we actually uh, has come in for this year uh, or is in the process of coming in for this year. That's the number we have guaranteed to us based on, on the current uh, numbers. So that's what we're anticipating for fiscal year 2022 as well. Next slide. So this is the, the preliminary uh, indication of, of uh, what we're going to use for state aid, I mean, for local, local receipts rather. And you can see that we're not really um, when we're still, if you take a look at what the three-year average has been, even if we were to use the, um, you know, the, if the number it's at nine million three seventy, we're still way off where we were in eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, for that matter. So, um, so we're we're still being very conservative in our estimate here. So we're not looking to overinflate that number, and and to use that to uh, in a way that will. That will sometimes somehow not come in. We, we are seeing money come in on hotel motel, but it's coming in pretty much at what we expected it would come in at. So we're not surprised by uh, what we're seeing so far, uh, but we're not and we're not concerned about what's been coming in so far either. Um, and we were just talking about this before the meeting tonight that Marie was monitoring the uh, you know the tax collections and you know we're we're actually doing we're actually you know pretty much where we want to be at this point. Um, we are expecting some pretty big payments coming in over the next uh, next month or two. We'll start seeing motor vehicle excise come in. We'll also see the pay, Patriots payment come in. Um, we're starting to see those numbers start to start to roll in. That will certainly help. And collections are going. Uh, you know, re resident uh, residential taxes are coming in as predicted. So no surprise there. Um, so any surprises in terms of where things are going in that respect. So that's what we're listening, looking for, for for an FY fiscal 22 number in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the revenues for there. Right, uh, available numbers for cash. Uh, we're using free cash. We're using a 1.33 number for free cash. That's a big number compared to other years, but no surprise there. I mean, that's what we're that's where we are, and that's what we have to do in order to make things balance. We're, as as numbers can become more clear to us. That number will either go up or it'll come down a little bit, but I don't anticipate to go go up a lot more from there. It more likely will come down based upon where numbers come in at the end. And uh, overlay surplus, that's the number that we we already have over two million dollars in overlay surplus right now, so we, we're we're going to be fine using that one point one million dollar number. Uh, the the, res the ambulance reserve account we're going up a little bit this year because we talked about the the, uh, the new firefighters about two hundred thousand dollars so uh, no surprise on that number either. Um, 
in the water indirects uh, and George and Maria are finalizing these numbers now, but this is where this is where we're estimating those numbers that come in at this point. Those are the money that's money that's charged to the water and sewer accounts that uh, get charged back to the town for for billing, for you know all the for uh, health insurance, things of that nature that gets charged to the town and uh, and, and gets paid um, to their employees as a result of. Uh, of their of them being um, you know us cutting checks for them for for it being employees etc so uh we're looking at a total uh amount of available funds of five million four four seventy nine eight forty six four that will help balance the uh fy22 budget next slide so this is the just a, a, a review of the water fund budget expenses uh, budget overview um, it tells you, it indicates where the water use, user, uh, where the water co comes to pay for the water system. It's mostly 90% is water user fees and 10% is, is retained earnings. That's basically their free cash is what they use to help balance that every year. Um, and then obviously in, in the, the yeoman amount of, of expenses in debt service, only 4% is in salaries and the operating expenses at 33%. All right, the next one is sewer. The sewer funds, same type of thing. Uh, sewer use charges and sewer retained earnings and and uh, a much smaller amount of debt service because we don't have as much involved with the debt service in that area. Um, salaries is, is at 10% and operating expenses is 89%. Obviously we have a, we have a uh, you know, the, 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 the salaries piece is, is a higher number there because it, there's, more, there's a lot of maintenance to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the sewer system, even though it's a smaller, but it's, but it's a, uh, it was a pretty significant cost. Right. Um, so this is just a uh, laying out in terms of where we, uh, what we talked about earlier, no surprises here. It's just, it's just another way of showing it and um, it's in how we're, how we're going to, uh, what we're estimating for next for fiscal 22. All right, so, so next steps, the advisory committee plans to start budget review meetings beginning uh, tomorrow night. Uh, they have the books just like you do. Uh, we'll continue to plan and forecast the efforts along the way. Um, you know, we, we're we at a point now where we just have to kind of make sure that there aren't any surprises. And if there are surprises, then we'll certainly come back. Now, we it's, I don't think it's any, it's, 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 it's really no concern to you or to us that we're 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 an organization that can pretty much pivot in any circumstances any circumstances you saw that happen when we saw we i made this presentation last january not realizing what the extent or the impact would be on COVID 19. we then came back to you in march and april and said you know we got to change the budget numbers because it just isn't going to work and we did that we made the budget work we're, we're comfortable where we are at this point in time. We're managing to keep the operation running. Um, we've been fully operational as a town since July. I can say that, say without hesitation that we're one of the few communities that is. Um, so I, and I'm really proud of the employees for doing their work on a, and coming in and doing their job on a regular basis. So it, it's just a, um, we're, we're not concerned about what we have to do if we, if we need to take a, a different approach. We'll, we'll do what we have to do to make it work. And if we have to make some significant changes, something doesn't come in that's, that requires a, a significant change, we'll certainly do what we have to do to, to fit that in. So we've been able to do that over the years and uh, we'll continue to do that as we go forward. But I, I all, all in all, I'm, I'm very comfortable where we are budget wise. Uh, again, we're balanced. I can, you know, Marie was just pointing out to me that one of our neighboring towns is like five million dollars in the hole right now, in in, in, com in comparison to next year, and and I just don't know how they're going to make that work, but they will. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard for them to do that, but um, that's a pretty big gap to open up to, to stay uh, to be open to be out that far at this point in time. And yeah, we're balanced, and we're actually balanced to the point where we actually have a little tiny surplus. But so we at this point, I'm open to to listening to what people have to say. And if we want to, um, I'll certainly I'll answer any questions we can. But if, if we can't answer your question tonight, we'll certainly write down your question and then take the information back and and uh, send you a response and maybe even follow up at next week's meeting with some further responses. All right, uh, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. All right, great, uh, great presentation, uh, Bill. Um, you know, thank you for all your hard work and all your departments.
Uh, we'll open it up to uh, any questions, you know, keeping in mind that this is a, you know, the first time we're seeing it within the last couple of days with the book and the presentation from Bill. Uh, and I was going to reiterate the same thing Bill just said, you know, anything we can't answer tonight, um, you know, Bill can make as part of his report uh, next week, uh, answer some of those questions unless you feel you need them quicker. Uh, open it up. Um, Chris? A couple of quick things. Bill, you mentioned um, the, the various buildings uh, that we still owe money on, uh, the middle school. When, is that coming due pretty soon? Um, yeah, so so I'm, I'm glad you raised that, Chris, because uh, we were talking about that earlier tonight, that, um, you know, if you look at the middle school, uh, there were two, actually, there were two bond issuances on the middle school. Uh, both of those are coming due in 2025. Is that right, Marie? I think it was 2025. 20, it was fiscal 25. So yep. that means that we can stop planning now because um, there's been talk about doing other projects. So the, the right way to do this, if we're you know, trying to manage our debt properly, is to look at opportunities to insert new debt when stuff comes off. And so we've done a good job of that up to this point. I want to continue to do that um, so that the, so we continue to address the needs of the town in a very uh, pro, prospective and forward thinking way. But yeah, Chris, you're right. It's coming 20, 2025 is when that those two projects come off. And, now, and those are debt exclusions. You know, so um, so that means that opportunity so that and then, you know, we want to take a look at where we are on the debt service side, um, the general debt service side, because those were debt exclusion. So if we can sort of slide some of that debt service into that schedule as opposed to a debt, uh, a debt, uh, debt exclusions, then we can uh, actually try and reduce some of the cost on that side. Okay, and the only other thing right off the bat is the presentation that you just had. Can we get a copy of that? Sure, absolutely. Yep. I mean, a lot of the numbers are in this book, but um, sure. there was one, and, and that's why I wanted, you had mentioned using $5.4 million to balance the budget. Um, the number that I think I found in the book that we got doesn't match that, so I just want to be apples to apples. Yeah, I, I would be clear about the fact that we're using different uh, different resources to get to that number, but um, the, the amount of free cash we're using is 1.1 million, 1.3 million, not not 5.4. So, okay. Right now, but the, the total number of that you had mentioned to balance the budget was what 5.4 million. That's right, 5.4. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to kind of. Yeah, we'll double check that and make sure it's, it's, it's yeah right. and, and as long as if you can send us the presentation that sure. we just watched um, and then I, I definitely will I made a, a bunch of questions but I don't think this is the meeting to kind of drill down I'll probably okay. email you like you know why is this up why is that down type of thing sure. yep. uh, good, good job thanks thank you anybody else uh, Leah did you raise your hand yeah go ahead Leah good. Um, I have a couple little questions too um, that I'll shoot over and a number that uh, Marie has already sent back answers on. But just a quick question, are we actually balanced if you bring school into it? So I know school's having this discussion right now, the school committee about their budget, but the way I understood it, I thought there was, I forget the number, Marie, was it like 1.6 or one? What do they have a gap that they need to close? And I know that it's not ours to close, but do we need to keep that in mind as we look at the budget holistically as being balanced? We are balanced, including the schools. Um, and there's a small surplus, um, uh, $39,000. We have a surplus right now overall, including everything. Um, Includes the school school budget as yep. well. Okay, great. That's wonderful news. Yeah, that is. No, I don't. I don't know if if um, if there's a concern about the existing budget, but I, I'm not aware of that at this point in time. It's not been brought to my attention. That's a major concern for that. I know I had it as one of my questions. Um, I think you did. The, yeah, but, it was to, uh, to close the 1.16 million gap that they talk about appropriation. It was. That's Mark, what I next talk about what that number is in the budget book. It's on page 106 that it notes it. That, that made me if again, if I was if I misunderstood what that meant, um, but it's under the first budget highlight 
um, on page 106. That was the, the statement that led me to believe that there was a gap that we had to close. But maybe again, they have some kind of I think that's the number they're looking for for next year is, uh, is that one. And I, we've included that number in the budget proposal. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, we'll take a look at it again, though. Yeah, and sure. anyone that wants to look, it's page 106 in that first budget highlight that just had me okay. um, questioning it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, Steph? Hi. Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to disclose that I've barely gotten a chance to take a look at it. Unfortunately, I didn't get to pick it up until yesterday. And um, I had some doctor's appointments and stuff going on. So um, I'm sure I will have lots of questions once I really get to look at it. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on everybody's comments. Um, it was um, just at first glance opening it. I was like, wow, this is this is some some nice work, Marie. So um, again, thank for myself as well. Thank you so much. Um, I would I would just say that um, you know. Uh, not that we want to jump too far ahead of ourselves, but um, you know, like I think Bill, you even mentioned that we just don't know how much um, how much longer the the effects of the COVID is going to uh, tail on with us. And um, I would just say, as a general statement, um, this is great to know that we're coming in, you know, um, on budget. And just uh, I would say, just the next couple of years might be just um, some important years for us to. Uh, to, to keep it keep it that way you know i'm not jumping ahead too far ahead right. just a general general statement that um um I, I don't think any of us thought that this was going to last as you know as long as it did and um and i think we you know we're possibly hopefully the state and federal aid will be there um but you know it, it's it's still a little um i'm still a little nervous about not not knowing we haven't even hit that part of um, things opening up where we might see concerts. Um, I, I don't know we're going to see any concerts in this year, in this budget year. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we, li we live in an area where there's a small window for them to have those concerts. Um, you know, the, the participation for the, for the games for football or soccer, I mean, it, it is what it, what, what it is. And I think um, where, you know, our guarantee is is um, good for for what we're missing out there, but of course, just those little extra things that we get to grab some money from up there. But um, overall, it was um, you know, like I said, I just got a chance to glance at it. But um, you know, uh, nice job. I'm, I'm looking forward to. Oh, and one other thing, um, I'm not sure if um, I know. I reached out to Larry Uwe, just asking him about them meeting tomorrow, and um, he said that. Uh, maybe Christina was going to send out a link to us if we want to pop on and watch their meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say just from my experience on Adcom, uh, e even though it, you know we're going to listen to the same presentations, sometimes different questions come up. I know when I was on Adcom, I would definitely watch the selectmen's meeting too because different questions might come up and, and you know it's just helpful. Uh, I know everybody's busy and um, you know I don't know if you have time to tune into every adcom meeting but i think you know uh if you can even just to listen to some of the when some of the big presentations are going on it's, it's helpful and just wondering if um it, um do are we posted as a possible meeting if we for or i i'm pretty sure i remember being on adcom yes. seeing the the selectmen always posted as a meeting so we're, we're good to to if christina gives us the link we're good to go on tomorrow no problem yes. okay awesome yeah. Also. We are. So last last I talked about that, I thought we weren't. So we can watch so, on cable. Yeah, one of, one of the things that um, Christina and I uh, discussed about that is the fact that there's not going to be three or four Board of Selectmen members in the room. This is the first time they're televising. So we have the opportunity as, as Board of Selectmen to listen in, but not have to be in a room together and making that a meeting for the Board of Selectmen. So we didn't have to post it. You guys have the opportunity to listen in just like any citizen now uh, to the um, advisory committee now that it's being um, uh, on, on cable access. 
but it now that it's posted, so this just goes against what I talked to Christina about earlier in the week that we had. Yeah, so that. so we we talked about that afterwards, Doc, and I think that's a, a inconsistent with what you understood and maybe Leah, because I I talked about it afterwards, and I said, you know, I'm concerned that if we don't post it, that if you want to raise a question, that somebody could raise a concern about it. So I don't want to I don't want to put put you in a bad position by doing that. So I think we just we took the safer bet, which was to just to go ahead and post it to be on the safe side. All and right. I don't, think that, I don't think that generated out to us. So that's the first time we're hearing it. Yeah. yeah, we just we literally just decided that the other day. So so we because it was the right thing to do to so that it gave you the opportunity to participate if you wanted to. You don't have to, but you certainly have the option to. Okay. Okay. Never mind anything I just said. Okay. Yeah, and and Christine, if you can just make sure that those have the flyer that goes out with the email because that's how at least we and probably others know that our meeting is posted that we could do that sure. um, so i think that's just helpful for the public for us for everyone to know that we have a posted meeting because unless you go and look at that calendar you know i don't think we would have known that right so we, we we have actually done that in the past it just was just a little different this year because of because of being posted done through um through you know for, through through Zoom meetings, so it's just a little. But I just did, I I took the more cautious approach by saying like you know I think you're probably better off to post it just to be on the safe side. So I I just did, I do want to get get one get back to one comment that Stephanie made though, and that was relative to the upcoming year. So let's let's bear in mind that this is an important thing to put to, to put in perspective. We're actually going to make a we're making a budget now that's going to be in effect for 18 months from now. So the revenues that we're, we're, we're anticipating now are from July 1st of this year all the way to June 30th of, 20, of 2022. So I agree with you that I don't think we're going to see a lot of shows this year. In fact, I, I had, I've already had some preliminary conversations with the folks at the craft group. And, and, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, what's coming up and what's going to happen. And I don't anticipate we'll see a lot in terms of the summer shows. But we could very well start to see things emerge in the fall, and you could see things in next spring. And I, and I think there's pent up demand right now is for them to try and do something in the spring. So you may see that we may get some of those shows uh, come to us in spring of next year. I mean, it's not uncommon to see maybe see a show in May or, or, uh, or even in June. Um, I think Ed remembers that from, from, from the concert days. So we could see some of that revenue come in for shows in this fiscal in next fiscal year in the 22 in the fiscal 22 year so that's why we're we're a little bit more optimistic in that respect when i i think the way we are right now i mean it i think we i i think there's more optimism there is than there is pessimism about where we're going to be i think we are past the worst part of it i think now that the vaccinations are out and and now that they're trying to get ahead of this i think that the the new administration is actually uh, the, the federal administration is, is, is taking a much more aggressive approach here. Um, and I think that's going to help uh, try to get ahead of this a little bit. I think so. That's why we're we're a little bit more optimistic at this point in time than we maybe were last year at this time. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, something, Bill, you, you hit on something, too. I mean, across the board, you know, people are going once we can, people are going to want to go out. They're going to yeah. want to do things. You're going to have, um, as far as concerts go, you'll have artists who have not been able to um, right. earn, earn, you know, so I, yeah, you know, that, that'll be, that'll be good for next year if it, if it jumps, well, jumps in. And um, I think the meal, the hotel and meals, meals tax will be uh, benefactors of that as well. So, I mean, the one thing I didn't mention, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear about this is that, you know, we, we're, again, we're going to, we're, we're foregoing another payment on our, on our, on our, uh, uh, OPEP for, uh, payment this year again because it's all based upon where we are with our, you know, with the hotel motel and and uh, and taxes that we we set aside for that purpose. So, um, but having said that, if we do get some federal money in this year, we might be able to use some of that against some of that that payment in, later in the in this fiscal year. So we could make some payment towards that in this fiscal year and maybe even some next year, depending upon where things come in. So I, I'm not discounting that option. It's just I want to say to you that we're not counting on it at this point because I don't have enough information to, to say otherwise. Okay. Well, also, Bill, am I correct with, um, I mean, we had a goal. I remember, um, you know, Randy going over it. Um, we were, 
ahead of the eight ball anyhow. We're, we're still way ahead. Yeah, we're still yeah. way ahead. So yeah. we're about we're about twelve and a half million dollars towards that that service. Um, and and uh, the other thing that's important to remember too is now we're only eight years away from retiring the uh, pension debt. So that's a pretty extraordinary when you think about that. So so that pension debt is about three and a half million dollars a year, Marie, is in George. I think it's, it's in terms of what we pay for that every year in terms of uh, debt service on that. So that three and a half million dollars could then go right in towards paying the uh, debt service on the or the anticipated debt service on the um, on the OPEP. So so we, we may we may be able to make up good chunks of that. It's it's five million dollars. So. So it's five million dollars. So that's that's a big number that we can we can then transfer over to that that debt service and get rid of rid of both of them within a short period of time. I, mean, I won't be here to see it, but you know, but there'll be um, but the next people that are involved in this organization will see it, and it'll happen in their lifetime. So, which is pretty extraordinary in, in that respect. Okay, one other question, either for for Bill or or Christina, if um if three of us. You know, I don't know if anybody else, I mean, um, my goal is to try to tune in to ADCOM tomorrow, um, or even just for the future to know if, you know, so the meeting's posted, if three of us are there, or even say two of us show up, should we, um, should we still call the meeting into order? Or do we have to do that if there's three of us? And if there's not three, do we just, you know, we're there, it's posted. Do we have to actually call our meeting into order if there's a certain number of us there? I think that that only comes into really comes into play if you're actually debating amongst yourselves. Yeah, I, we've, right? we've never yeah. done that in the past. Yeah. We've never. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, it, posting you and having you there as a, as a posted meeting covers you for uh, for the in the event that there's a there's a concern over a mobile meeting law violation. Right? Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, have a, uh, uh, I. Any other questions? I don't have everybody in front of me. No, I think we're uh, we're all good, Bill. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. I just I appreciate you uh, get letting me off a little bit early here, so I can go have dinner. But um, but but I really it's uh, I really you know I appreciate you know, meeting you tonight because it takes us puts us a little bit back on schedule, and I, I appreciate the input. And again, if anybody has any any questions, send them to us. We'll we'll get them answered for you, and we'll we'll get them back to you for the next few meetings. So. We'll be, we'll be able to keep things moving along, All right? Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a good Thanks, night. Everybody. See you uh, Me next time. Me to adjourn. Wait, hey, John. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you, Christina. I need a... Leah. Leah. <laughs> oh, Leah. Doc, before we adjourn, um, just because we have everybody here, just to let everyone know, Ed and I will be meeting with um, Paige and Chris on Monday at 11. Um, and um, could possibly just... Um, before then, Christina, can you make sure that we're, um, you know, we're posted, like um, because it's yep. a committee, and okay. also um, can maybe check into what we need to do as far as uh, minutes being taken for us. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think we're supposed. I think I'm hoping we're going to meet a couple of times. I think we we might have said that we'd maybe get back to the rest of the board maybe in a month's time or so. So just to let you guys know where our first meeting will, will be Monday. And then, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll have a couple before, uh, before we come back with you guys. We just want to make sure we're all good for, for minutes and, and uh, the meeting posted. Yeah. I think, I think um, Steph, um, you should bring a, um, a legal pad with you and, and jot down some minutes. Unfortunately, I can't talk and write at the same time. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring a pad for us. All right, thanks. Go. Ed, uh, I'm going to nominate you for that. How's that? Ed, Ed, you should, Ed, you should bring your, 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 uh, well, your cards, your index cards. That works every time. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, just uh, like I, we're going a little bit old school in the fact yeah. that, you know, write down, you know, the time it started, who's in attendance. Yeah, we get a small, uh, George's got a small recorder if we need to. I was to. just going to say, George, as long as everybody knows they're being recorded, could you we got a big recorder. That? You can just do it at the meeting. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay, perfect. I'll cover it. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, everyone. I'll take a, a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call. Chris, yes. Stephanie, yes. Mark, yes. Ed, yes. Leah, yes. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.